Welcome back for another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking a bit of AI and specifically AI agents and what the hell just came out of CES 2024. I've been watching a lot of my favorite YouTubers uh, and looking at all of their snapshots of the technology that is about to hit our society. And it's prompted me to like go very deep in thought. I'm over here on my computer today um, writing, I've written a blog post about this because shit's about to get real. <laughs> uh, other than spatial computing and transparent TVs uh, are coming to the market very soon. AI agents are the next thing as well. And AI agents, to me, it's been a bit of a buzzword, just like AI has been, you know, like everyone's going, ooh, AI this, ooh, AI that. AI is gonna take over the world. But until you see things like this, like the rabbit r one the next round of ai like large action models as this jesse guy is coining them they're really going to be the thing that takes over from human beings the rabbit r one itself look it's pretty much just a handheld device at this point in time it can't actually like pick something up and move it but what it can do is literally watch how you use a piece of software or an app that's on your phone it can monitor that it can learn how you personally use it and then it's actually going to be able to mimic your actions in that program for you with a voice command <laughs> Like, it kind of blew my mind. And, you know, the instances that they had in this keynote, it was specifically around, you know, ordering things like Uber Eats or ordering an Uber to your door or um, a planning and booking a trip end to end. Essentially, after watching the keynote, I was like, oh my God, this is the coolest thing ever. But once I finished watching it, I kind of thought, hang on a minute. If they're training these models to start using apps and softwares that I use, like I use so many apps and softwares in my job every single day. I'm, I'm a database manager, so I'm constantly using code. I'm using all sorts of different different application programming interfaces. And essentially, once this thing learns how to use all the programs I can use, that's my job gone. <laughs> that's the realization I had. And then when I thought about it a little bit deeper, you know, the real scary part of this is when they start putting this type of software or large action models into humanoid bodies. When you actually have a humanoid robot that not only like understands what goes in, but can actually take action in the real world environment. Like, yo, robot, do the washing. Robot, lift that couch and move it to the truck. It's it's pretty insane. As soon as that kind of stuff comes around, which look, it already is Tesla, their self-driving cars are just about ready for prime time. They're already on the road. You still have to like monitor the steering wheel. But I think in a matter of time, we're going to start getting cars that have no steering wheel. Actually, I don't think they're going to come. They are. There was models at CES on display. So obviously these masterminds that are working in all these tech companies are working on it. And it's only a matter of time before it's here. And the way the rabbit R1 kind of works is that's the brain. Now it's about what they put it into. Yeah, cars, humanoid robots. There was another example too. I was watching a YouTube video where this machine is able to autonomously cook food based on a recipe and then even put dishes away. And it can push chairs in as well. It, my head's kind of spinning. And yes, these things are only in their infancy now, but coupled with stuff like we're seeing from the rabbit R1, like there's not going to be any need to go to work. <laughs> and the further ethical concerns I have when I have that thought is like, okay, our whole society is built on, okay, I get up, I go to work, I earn my money, I'm this profession. We kind of build our identity around it. You don't have to. It's hard not to though. I think we're not even ready for how quickly it's about to happen. And now I really understand why Elon Musk was so like freaked out about um, the release of AI and needing it to be moderated very, very carefully from the outset. I just really wonder where this is going. So shit's getting weird, man. And I am quite excited about it. Not only have we never had technology like this, it's actually affordable. Like the Rabbit R1, I paid 300 Aussie dollars. I paid more than that for a bloody iPod mini back when they came out. So it's actually wild how inexpensive this technology is and it's going to be in everyone's hands. So good luck moderating that. I don't know what it's going to be like. I am probably more so on the optimistic side of how all of this is going to go down because if you think about it, we've faced a scarier things than, you know, not needing to go to work or needing to regulate a new innovation. So I think we can definitely work out how to incorporate it into our life. But the challenges that come around with it, like I think the world is going to get bloody interesting. And like, to what extent is it going to get bad before it gets better? That's really the question. I love tech, but this these new innovations are a little bit like, whoa. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, because I'm just wondering if anybody else has watched this Rabbit R1 keynote and gone, holy hell, yeah, the world is going to bloody change. <laughs> anyway, all right. Thanks for tuning in. Looking forward to your discussions in the comment section and I'll see you next time for another video. Goodbye.